It's nice to see all of you today to join us for Celebrating Act Two. John Coleman and I are with the virtual gourmet, John Mariani. Hello, John. Hello, John. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Art. Hey, John. Hey, uh, John Mariani, uh, publisher of the Virtual Gourmet, a noted uh, travel and food writer. Um, you also have a nice crew of people who, uh, associates, I guess, who write articles for you, uh, experts in various things. And one one guy whose name I can't, you have to forgive me, I can't remember his name, but he uh, covers Las Vegas. Curtis, Michael Curtis? Jerry Dawes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Las Vegas, yeah. John Curtis. Yeah, but the guy I wanted to mention was Jerry Dawes. <coughs> and what struck me was Jerry Draw Dawes wrote an article not too long ago for the Virtual Gourmet, wonderful article, about the guide Michelin, the mm. Michelin guide, and he he took exception to them. He thought they were biased because they don't cover uh, Spain enough. They give Spain short shrift. So my question for you, and I thought, well, okay, that's one guy's opinion, and it was certainly an interesting article. He made a good case for it. But the guide Michelin is considered the Bible. It's it's everything you need to know. It's always correct. Is that so? Give me a, a little perspective. Is this maybe not the guide? Is maybe not as perfect as some people think it is? Well, it's never been. It's about as perfect as the Bible is, <laughs> which is highly imperfect, <clears throat> and it's been considered the Bible of gastronomy in France. And when they started to publish uh, volumes <clears throat> about other countries. Everybody took exception when they went to Italy, and the only restaurants in Italy that got the top ratings were all extravagantly expensive um, with menus that more resembled French restaurants than Italian restaurants. Ah. Yeah, and when they went to Germany, <clears throat> the most French restaurants in Germany are the ones that work. And when they went to Spain, same thing. They adopted all of the most extravagant, modernist, molecular cuisine restaurants, where it'll cost you $600 and you'll have 15, 20, 30 courses. And that's the type of thing that uh, uh, that, that Dawes is complaining about, <clears throat> even though he may like some of those restaurants. Dawes, I should say, is the preeminent. He's not perfect by a long time shot. I know him very well, um, <laughs> but he is the preeminent. Uh, uh, guide to Spain. Um, he was in the U.S. Navy in a naval port uh, in Spain uh, during the 1960s, and uh, he just fell in love with it. And he's been there a million times. He knows every ham carver. He knows every paella maker. He knows every cheese maker. <clears throat> so he's really good. And he just came out of, with his own book called Sunset in a Glass, which I highly recommend, which you can get through um, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and so forth and so on. So Jerry <clears throat> is very, very biased himself in that regard, because he doesn't even think there's any good food outside of Spain. So right. that being what it is, a few words about how the Michelin Guide was formed, or the Guide Michelin. Michelin. They hate French. Hate putting that and pronouncing that <clears throat> that vowel, that, that that consonant. That last N, yeah. Moulin Rouge, Moulin, no, Moulin Rouge, Moulin Rouge, Mont Rachet, not Mont Rachet. Okay, so <clears throat> as you know, Michelin is a tire company, so tires all over the world. Sure. And they were an early on a, um, a tire maker uh, in France, and the people, the only people who needed tires were, I'm talking about 1890s, 1900s, in that period, <clears throat> were rich people who had cars, big cars with chauffeurs, you know, uh, kind of cars that uh, Mr. Toad would, <laughs> would <Yeah>. have. <laughs> and, uh, so they drive around and they'd go off on their tours, weekends or otherwise. So let's drive down to the south of France and spend the next six weeks there. <clears throat> so the Michelin guy was originally written, rather slender volume, for the chauffeurs. No kidding. Chauffeurs were the ones who were responsible to check out uh, where they're going to be eating, how far, what the distance was from each town and so forth. So we're in Lyon and we're going to be going to, into Provence. So they had to work that out. 
one could they could stop for these very demanding wealthy people. <clears throat> um, they even had one of the requirements to get uh, a good rating from the uh, Michelin Guide was that it had to serve the dogs of the wealthy people who travel with their dogs. And uh, this persisted for decades and decades. I know some chefs who said we used to go out and throw this slop at the door, you just kick him across the, in the parking lot and so forth, but <laughs> it was true. Well, it developed, except for during World War I, where it's hard to judge anything, uh, by the 1920s, 30s, and after the Second World War, Michelin really, Michelin guides really took off as the most reliable because they were the really the only guides. Um, <clears throat> things like Fodors and, and Fromers and others came later during the uh, uh, jet age when Americans started to travel. So you only had the Michelin guide to guide you. And the one to France is, I'm not kidding, I, 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 do I have it here? I probably have it here. Well, it doesn't matter. It's, it's as thick as a phone book. <clears throat> it has thousands upon thousands of hotels and restaurants. And if you get one star, <clears throat> that means a very good restaurant of its kind. And you got to be really good. Two stars, and listen to the verbiage here, is worth a detour. Meaning that your chauffeur <clears throat> is worth a detour to get off the roof because this place is so good you don't want to miss it. A third star means worth a journey to wow. get your car to drive to this place because you're going to have one of the greatest meals of your life. And they never uh, change that verbiage, okay, which is a little silly in this day and age. Um, so when people say worth a journey, it's some guy in Tokyo say, hey, you know, wrap up the, uh, wrap up the family, we're, we're flying to Paris. Um, but it was very, very dependable in France because they were uh, talking about almost exclusively French restaurants and French cuisine. And if you got a star, they always recommended three dishes that were required all to, always to be on the menu, which don't want to disappoint uh, the readership. And at one time, although this is this is very specious, it's been written about, um, they had uh, inspectors who, <clears throat> if you're going to get a star, would go back two, three, four times. You're going to get three stars. They would sell, send maybe six inspectors from other parts of France to check this place out if it was worthy enough. Well, uh, I've done some stories on the Michelin Guide and interviewed the, uh, the publisher. Uh, and remember, it's Michelin Guide, tire guy, because it started out for chauffeurs, but now they want you to buy the book because you're going to be driving around France on tires. <clears throat> so having interviewed uh, them over the years, uh, here's how it works now. In all of Italy, they have five, maybe seven or eight um, inspectors who somehow rate thousands upon thousands of hotels and restaurants. So do the math. Yeah, yeah. In France, they probably have 12 to 20. And each of those only eats, unless he's called upon to go to a three-star restaurant, only eats in the region he is um, chosen for. So he will only eat in Alsace-Lorraine, and his colleague will only be eating in Burgundy, and his other colleague will only be eating in um, Paris, and so forth. So we're not talking about an enormous number of scads of, of inspectors going out. <clears throat> they do work hard. They eat lunch and dinner, lunch and dinner, lunch and dinner. They're expected to eat everything on their plate. So it worked for for. France, but it didn't work in the other countries like Spain and Italy, and it's 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 poo pooed uh, as it should be. In the United States, they didn't know how to handle it at all. So about uh, 15 years ago, they did a uh, guide to New York. They figured you know, New York has enough uh, restaurants, and uh, of course, all, New York has a lot of Thai restaurants, Vietnamese restaurants, Mexican restaurants, Italian restaurants. They're not all French. So what do the inspectors know about these other? And those other cuisines almost never got any stars. The only star the Michelin Guide ever rewarded was to Peter Luger's for uh, the only steakhouse was to Peter Luger's in Brooklyn, <clears throat> which is questionable. So then they thought, well, you know, we, we, we have to do Los Angeles and Vegas. That guide lasted exactly two years. And they had five inspectors for both cities. And they'd go back and forth between the cities. Yeah. So again, 
do the math, all right? So they close that down. Well, since then, for whatever reasons, uh, mainly to sell tires, and this is Jerry Dawes' big, biggest gripe. He says, they're trying to sell tires, not books, um, that they are now published. They publish in uh, Chicago, Miami is new, D.C., um, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, San Francisco. I think that about covers it, and, and New York, of course. Um, <clears throat> and one is more or less slender than the than the other. And um, they are not dishonorable in any way, but the methodology is now questionable. And um, they do their write-ups, they do their um, 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 notes and so forth, but um, there have been some stumbles along the way. They reviewed a restaurant that had closed and they still put it into the guide. Yeah. They used to have a policy that if the chef changes, uh, <clears throat> they take all the stars away and start from scratch again. That's no longer true. They used to say that it takes years to get a star and then a second one. Third. Now you could open in January and if the book comes out in November or October, you could be in there with a star, even three stars. So yeah. it ain't what it used to be. They've also tried to be much more downscale. You'll find a lot more Nicaraguan restaurants and Cambodian restaurants <clears throat> than there once were. But all of the three-star restaurants in New York and elsewhere, every single one of them is a tasting menu this long of 15, 20 dishes at an average price of $500 without wine. And uh, it's just it's just a little ridiculous that these are the only restaurants that are <clears throat> worth a journey. Uh, yeah. 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 So it's not the common man's handbook uh, that some make it out to be. No. Unfortunately, we don't have any other common man's handbooks which are uh, better done than uh, that. Uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. We have an uncommon man, John Mariani. And if you go to johnmariani.com, you're going to get reviews of all sorts of restaurants from Disneyland That's to true. all over the place. So I'm sorry, Michelin, move over. He ain't selling yep. tires. Go I to johnmariani.com and look up the uh, yep. virtual gourmet and go through the archive and find find the restaurant review. Well, and I will hotels, say, by the way. as devil's advocate to, to myself, that some of those reviews would have been based on visits I did maybe five or six years ago. So yeah. they're not entirely to be trusted. Um, if I recommended a little restaurant on the, in Santa Monica that I haven't been to in six years, mm. but the stuff that I've written in the last two years, I stand behind. And mm -hmm. if there is a shift change, uh, I'll take it, take it out or, or amend it in some way. Yeah. Well, John, I, I'm, I appreciate the perspective on the Michelin Guide because uh, I've always just thought of it as irrelevant to my life. And now you've confirmed that $600 <laughs> tasting menus are not, I don't care how many stars they have, you know, they're not in my, uh, I'm not going out of my way. I'm not making a journey for that. It is helpful if you are, let's say, in Italy, in a small town or small city in Italy. There aren't any star restaurants, but they will give you some trattorias that will be dependable. Mm. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's useful. Yeah. Thank you, and give my regards to Jerry Dawes, will you? I sure will. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.